When people talk about the Digimon card game, they're probably either talking about the newest TCG that came out in 2020, or the original Digibattle game from 2000. But did you know there was also the Digimon Detector game in 2002, the Digimon Fusion card game in 2012, and the one we're talking about today, the Digimon Collectible card game from 2004. Welcome to the first ever episode of Card Game Crypt, the show where I not only discuss old dusty card games, but I actually play them as well. Chances are, if you've ever heard anything about Digimon 2004, it's, oh yeah, that's the one that was the Yu-Gi-Oh clone. Which, the more I play, yeah, it's, it's a lot like Yu-Gi-Oh. On the surface, Digimon CCG has players battling back and forth, playing Digimon, leveling them up through Digivolution, and then using your Digimon to bonk your opponent's Digimon and attack their face with the ultimate goal of collecting 7,500 data points to win. To support doing this, there are Digimodify cards that can disrupt the field by destroying things or discarding things, Digivolve cards that speed up the process of making a big bad boss mon, and Tamer cards that act like battle tricks to randomly empower your Digimon when they need it most. So let's take a look at these card types. Digimon are your creatures, units, monsters, resonators. They have an attack value, defense value, and special effect, which is pretty standard stats as far as a lot of card games go. The unique attribute for this game is the level in the upper left. In this game, Digimon come in four levels, Rookie, Champion, Ultimate, and Mega. The only cards you're allowed to play on the board are Rookie cards. The Rookie cards can then Digivolve into the next level Champion during a specific phase on your turn. Anything can't just evolve into anything though, so on the bottom of a non-Rookie card it will say what it can evolve from. Gabumon can Digivolve into Garurumon for instance, but Wormmon that booty dough. can also evolve into Garurumon. This goes for Ultimate and Mega levels as well. Garurumon can Digivolve into Weregarurumon, but so can Shadramon and Arumon. Metal Gururumon only digivolves from Weregururumon, though. Digimon also have types that come up in their effects, but there are so many types that it's hard to match anything. Gururumon gives all animal Digimon plus 100 attack, so let's go through his starter deck and see if we can find an animal. We got larva, mammal, sea animal. There we go. That wasn't so... Wait, what? Sea animal's different than animal? Oh. Okay, uh, the bird, reptile, wizard, evil? Okay, there we go. We got an animal. Now you might have been thinking, it's probably hard to have exactly where Garurumon ready and then also draw Metal Garurumon to Digivolve it into. And you'd be right. That's what Digivolve cards are for. You got a champion? Any champion will do. Hit him with a detector and it can Digivolve into any Mega. Mechanic bypassed! But, uh, you see that Giga Power word right there? That means you can only have one copy of it in your deck. You're gonna have to get a little bit lucky somehow to get this big boy out. The next and probably simplest card type is the Digimodify. These are one-shot effects that specify when they can be played. Attack, move, Digivolve, often on your opponent's turn. They can stop your opponent from Digivolving, they can draw you cards, they can be a Minecraft sword that kills the biggest Digimon your opponent has. Nothing really too complex here. The final type of card is the Digidestined. You can play them to boost your Digimon's attack or defense. Why isn't this the simplest card? Oh, you'll see. Next, let's look at how the game is set up and how the turns play out. It's one of those bunch of different phases games, but most of them are pretty straightforward. Before the game, both players have decks of at least 50 cards with a limit of 3 copies per card and 1 copy of any card with GIGA POWER! The board itself has 10 spaces per side, a spot for your deck, or the online pile, a spot for the discard, your offline pile, and then 4 spaces for both your digivolve row and attack row. Both players shuffle their decks and cut them, you know the jib if you've played a card game in your dang old life, and you draw 5 cards. Then the phases go as follows. Draw phase. Draw 2 cards from your deck. This includes the first turn of the game, making a nice 7 to 5 cards on the first turn. Bring online phase. You can play up to two rookie Digimon in your Digivolve row. Digivolve phase. You can Digivolve up to two of your Digimon in the Digivolve row up one level. You can't Digivolve a Digimon and then Digivolve it again. Gotta be two different digital monsters. When you Digivolve, the original card is just put into the offline pile and the new one is put in the same spot. Move phase. You can move up to 
You guessed it, two Digimon into the row that they're currently not in. So you can move Digivolve to attack row or attack row back to Digivolve row. Digimon have to be in the Digivolve row to Digivolve. And unless otherwise stated, they need to be in the attack row to use their special effect. Speaking of attack row and attacking, attack phase. Each of your Digimon in the attack row can make one attack at either an opposing Digimon in their attack row or your opponent directly if they have no Digimon. If you've ever played Yu-Gi-Oh, this should sound pretty familiar. When a Digimon attacks another Digimon, you compare the attacker's attack to the defender's defense, unsurprisingly. If the attack is greater, the defending Digimon is sent to the offline pile and the difference between the attack and defense is added to the attacker's data point total. For example, if Kunamon attacks a Muchomon, the the Muchomon is destroyed and the Kunamon player gets 100 points. If the defense is higher, the attacker is sent to the offline pile and the defender gets the points. If Muchomon attacks Kunamon, Muchomon is destroyed and the Kunamon player gets 300 points. The early bird does not get the worm in either case. Unless there was a sudden attack increase from a child! Remember, the Digidestin cards are stat boosters and they can be played during the attack phase. And therein lies my biggest mystery with the game. I have no idea if these are supposed to be instant, quick effect speed type cards. If you're confused, I mean that I'm not sure if you can declare an attack and then play the Digidestin card before the attack resolves as a surprise boost moment. The rules are very unspecific and not very helpful. Digidestin cards are used during an attack. Cool, thanks, the card says that. I think the wording, has plus 350 attack, this attack, implies the attack has already commenced. So it only makes sense that they would be instant speed tricks, right? I think that makes for a more interactive game. I'm going with them being instants. If you're one of the seven other souls that played this game and know that I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. But know that I tried to figure this answer out. The original website for this game is long gone. And after a little while, I did manage to pull up the rules on the original website through the Wayback Machine. They did not help. This is all it says. The forums on the website seem to be mostly unsaved even through the Wayback Machine. So I went to the other oldest forum I could find on the internet, the old Pojo forums. I didn't find anything there either, really. I tried to search for a Facebook group, I tried to look around on Discord, I just couldn't find anything. So you know what? They're instance, according to me, the sole interpreter of these rules on this planet. Where was I? Oh right, the attack phase. If the attack and defense wind up being the same during the attack, both Digimon are sent to the offline pile and no data points are collected. If your Digimon attacks your opponent directly, you just add their whole attack value to your data point total. And finally, we have the discard phase. You can offline up to three cards from your hand and then draw the same number. It's almost like they knew that digivolving from one to three specific cards with the inability to play anything but the lowest level would make for a sloggy and bricky game. So you can discard that card and immediately draw the one card that would have made the card you discarded playable, my soul. If you're worried about decking out in this game, don't. If you run out of cards in your online pile, just shuffle your offline pile back into a new online pile. Man, that's hard to say consistently. There's also one more little mechanic that I didn't mention earlier because it's ridiculous. Some rookie cards have this line of names at the bottom. This is their true Digivolution line. If you have the entire line in your hand during the Digivolve phase, and there's also nothing in your Digivolve row, you can place all four cards in the Digivolve row, then offline everything but the Mega Level, gain 500 data points, and then your turn ends. What? And that's pretty much the game. It's a resourceless, very swingy, slightly confusing game because the rules aren't technical enough to be able to figure out what the heck you're doing. It really is kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh, but instead of tributing monsters for better ones, first you have to move them to a specific row, then you have to make sure the card in that row is the right one to turn into another one. Hmm. When I put it like that, it sounds a little ridiculous. The developers of the game must have also known it was ridiculous, but it seems like their solution was just to make the Digivolve cards that skipped all the specific card needing stuff, which is a solution, I guess. When it comes to stats in this game, they're all over the place. You could have a rookie with 1000 defense that this ultimate with 900 attack can't get over, and it's not like the ultimate even has a good effect to make up for the fact that his stats are bad. This doesn't get better as the game goes on either, it just gets weirder, so let's talk about the sets. 
The game launched as an exclusive to North America with two starter decks and the first set, Eternal Courage, in August 2004. A funny thing about the starter decks is that neither one of them have the ultimate you need to digivolve to their nice shiny mega card, where Garurumon and War Graumon were not in these decks. The only way to get out your boss monster was to use one of the two Digivolve cards you had. The decks were seemingly random assortments of cards with no real clear strategy. There were also some cards in the decks that had different card numbers and art, but the same name, stats, and effects. Apparently these did count as separate cards, so some cards you could just run twice as many of. They even have different rarities! I didn't notice that until I was editing this! Different- what? And at that, only some of them are different rarities. <laughs> Other cards had different names, arts, and card numbers, but still the same effect. You remember how you can only have one Minecraft sword because it's a Giga Chad card? Well, you can have a Miracle Ruby that does the exact same thing. Padding out them card numbers, I guess. Just by the way, all the sets in this game are only 60 cards, and they still felt the need to do this. Why'd they do this? The Gallantmon deck also had Impmon, who could just turn into any ultimate Digimon for free. And I also have to mention the enigma that is the times two attack Digidestined. Just multiply it by two. This is especially lethal in the Gallantmon starter deck where there's not one, not two, but three different cards with the effect of doubling any attack bonus it got from Digidestined. So you attack for a thousand, play the boost to double the attack, which adds 1,000, but then that boost gets doubled to 2,000 for a grand total of 3,000 attack. Okay. In January 2005, they launched the next set, Hybrid Warriors, which introduced the hybrids from Digimon Frontier, which had already finished airing at least a year before this. I really thought researching this I would get to say was airing at the same time, but, but no, Digimon Frontier stopped airing in 2003. If I can trust Wikipedia, that is. To play any of these hybrids, you needed to discard the correct Digidestined and the Spirit card, which did absolutely nothing other than let you play hybrids. Not to mention the actual hybrid card, which also needed to be in your hand. That's three specific cards you need to make one of these things. They had no effects, but they had ridiculous stats. Look at this, that's, that's a beefy boy. What's a goon to a Minecraft sword though, bonk? Later in 2005, the third set, Generations, was released. Least. I'm not entirely convinced this set actually exists at all, and it's by far the rarest set to find these days. This set adds some more, uh, kind of generic Digivolving support. Like Ancient Greymon Digivolves from Greymon and two other champion Digimon, or Rhino Kabuterimon needing one ultimate and then have Metal Kabuterimon and Beetlemon in your hand. It's like they made it less generic and more generic at the same time somehow. After that, they released a new starter deck, one based on the Royal Knights, and boy, the power is not creeping here. It's leaping! Up to this point, most normal mega-level Digimon had about 3,000 points of stats split between their attack and defense. And the hybrids had more stats, but they had no effects and they were hard to get out. But these Royal Knights have consistently around 5,000 points of stats, and they had special effects, and they were mega level, not hybrids, so you could use the Digivolve cards to skip to mega where the hybrids had no such cheat. Bruh. And last but not least, the fourth and final set for the game was also released in 2005, Operation X. This set introduced X antibody Digimon that were untargetable by normal Digimon special effects. So everything in this set ended up being X antibody support or X antibody hate. You got stuff like do things when you win in battle against an X antibody Digimon. Your opponent can't bring online X antibody Digimon. A lot of the mega level Digimon in this set are in line with the Royal Knight power jump. Some of them even breaking 5,000 points of stats while still having effects. There would not be room for another power leap, unfortunately, as it looks like the first one yeeted the game off the Grand Canyon because this set was the last of it. I'm sorry I don't really have any knowledge of the metagame. I tried poking around in a couple places as I mentioned earlier, and anyone that knew of this game just knew about it and had never played it. The sole surviving website that features the game only really has card lists, which I am extremely grateful for and used in this video, the rules, which I also made use of, and deck construction for the first set. I really like this one section that basically says, the Diaborum online basically only evolves from itself. I can't work with that. Maybe someday they'll add more support and I'll be able to do it. 
they did not. And that's Digimon 2004. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see this game in action, please check out my starter deck battle right here. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more card game breakdowns like this. It's pretty important for a new channel to get some engagement so I may please the algorithm and let it know that I'm worthy. Or maybe I'm not worthy. Let me know in the comments. You have feedback for the presentation of this series? I'm the Crypt Keeper, the Card Keeper, uh, two lanes, I don't know who you want me, what I should call myself. You've been watching Card Game Crypt. I'll see you on the flippity flop. Goodbye.